Greetings, hello, and a very warm welcome to the channel. The stars are shining and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys right now with a live one versus one battle featuring spawning in the north, it's going to be the United States forces of Jove. And spawning in the south, it's going to be the Overcommand West forces of Ruka ACL Nagano, who I'll just be calling Nagano because Ruka ACL Nagano is quite a mouthful. The map today is going to be Sturzdorf, so uh, yep, one of the uh, one of the lesser seen maps on the ladder. But uh, apparently, neither of these two players having it vetoed, and so we're going to have the uh, the pleasure of this battlefield today. Um, Jove, of course, one of the most prolific players in the community. Uh, you'll you'll see him um, at the top of a lot of the uh, leaderboards um, for for all five races or all five nations. Because I just have a sip on my drink. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely one of the most talented players in the community. Um, I had the I've had the pleasure of casting his uh, his play in the EU ESL Cups, and uh, yeah, he's a very impressive player all round. So, expecting some pretty good stuff here out of Jove. Nagano, on the other hand, a little bit more of an up and comer, but definitely a very talented player. I've seen him pull some amazing moves, and he definitely usually makes uh, pretty deep runs into the ESL tournaments. Um, <coughs> typically making it to like the quarters or even semis sometimes, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, Jove versus Nagano, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it on. So, uh, taking a look here at Jove's lineup, let's see. He's got the Heavy Cav Company, and wow, actually, he doesn't have the Calliope Commander. More oh, interesting stuff. Uh, Nagano, uh, he's got a pretty standard lineup here. He's got the Scavenge Doctrine. He's got the Luftwaffe Ground Support, Ground Support uh, sorry, Ground Forces Doctrine, which is pretty standard. And uh, he's mixing in the Special Operations Doctrine. Again, actually, um, becoming more and more of a feature. Pardon me. These days for overcommand players, uh, I see it more and more and more often. Now, uh, just as the players get underway the first few battles, uh, just a quick note about uh, the software and hardware things that I'm using. This is, yet again, um, the continuing evolution of my setup, pretty much. Uh, so I'm now using a slightly different program. I'm not using OBS, I'm using OBS MP. And uh, that means I've had to redo all of my settings and so forth. So uh, this is something of a test cast to see that the you know to see that the video and the sound and everything like that sounds good. So if you have any feedback about uh, whether it sounds and looks okay, please do let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, I've done a couple of test casts prior to this one, and they both seem to sound just fine. So anyway, um, looks like we've got a couple of squads of Volks Grenadiers here taking a fairly mediocre engagement. He's already lost four Volks Grenadiers here for just one rear echelon. The uh, the heavy cover here that the American forces find themselves in doing really well, and actually a danger of a squad wipe here for Nagano. I really hope that doesn't go down because it would be a terrible way to start what should be a really entertaining match here between these two players couple of uh, Garan rounds just flying past that uh, Volks Grenadier, but he's going to escape for now, so that's good <coughs> for Nagano. Another scuffle here uh, on the western victory point. A squad of Volks Grenadiers getting stuck in some riflemen. Nice flank here from the uh, Storm Pioneers, who are going to hold position right on the retreat path here for these riflemen. Uh, putting on some extra damage, but actually not chalking off an extra model there. Touch unlucky, perhaps, for Nagano. Uh, four squads of riflemen as these extra dudes now rolling onto the battlefield here for Jove. So, um, yeah, pretty rifle-heavy uh, strat here from Jove. That's reasonably typical. Schwer of a Max Schlepper now coming onto the field for ACL Nagano. He's uh, up to four squads of Volks Grenadiers. So it looks like these two players not trying anything crazy, just kind of uh, settling into the game uh, pretty regularly. I... Mm, I'm looking at the I've got I've got live like real-time audio monitoring so I'm just gonna it looks to me as though the game sound is just a little bit too loud so I'm gonna just 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 put it down a little bit um, it seemed to be eclipsing the level of my voice just a bit there so anyway I'm hoping it's uh, I'm hoping it's not too loud um, <coughs> Sorry, I'm just monitoring the sound here. Anyway, fight being taken here. We've got a nice concave of Volks Grenadiers. Going to force Jove to reconsider and fall back these uh, riflemen. But they actually got quite a few hits uh, put onto them. So their, their health reasonably low. Storm Pioneers here capturing the central victory point. They're actually kind of in a nasty crossfire here. Squad of riflemen to either side of them. Volks Grenadiers going to be pushing up and grabbing these two garrisons here to support. And wow, there's actually quite a lot of fighting here. If I kind of put the camera angle like this, you can see there's three squads of riflemen engaging the Storm Pioneers and two squads of Volks just now. Another squad of riflemen rallying in from the right there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, big fight going down. And if things stay like this, uh, this should be a fight that Joe will take. The riflemen are pretty ferocious, but here come two more squads of Volks Grenadiers joining in here. Uh, now, I don't know if they're going to go for the garrisons or not. They shouldn't, I think. They should probably just uh, stick to using some cover around here. It's probably going to be the superior choice. Uh, seemingly the tech of choice for the overcommand player going to be that battle gripper HQ. You can see it on the mini map just now deployed. Um, 
So he's going to have access to the ISG field guns, the uh, the flak half tracks, and the infrared half tracks that no one uses. Uh, and if we look at the American base here, let's check the tech here. Seemingly, he's going to be going for Captain Tech. Okay, cool. That's pretty groovy, mixing it up a little bit. A lot of players these days going for that utility car, its ability to place mines, the fact you get a Zook who can then garrison in the crew on the utility car. Pretty useful stuff, but I suppose that's more of a counter Vermac play. It's more for dealing with snipers and so forth. Um, so the captain, yeah, going to be a spicy choice. Uh, and we'll have to see what the weapon of choice is going to be. Of course, you'll have access to Stuart's, the M1 anti-tank gun. Um... And, of course, the pack howitzer, too. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, uh, yeah, these Volks Grenadiers kind of chasing these riflemen. I fear that that might be uh, a task, a, a mission too far for them, because uh, eight, eight Volks Grenadiers don't tend to beat riflemen in equal numbers. But, uh, you know, the Volks Grenadiers are reasonably trusty. The KR-98K rifles, pretty good at this kind of range, and they are actually getting some work done. But I imagine that uh, in the end, it'll be the Volks Grenadiers who are going to have to fall back. Whilst this fight's going on, I mean, it's not particularly spectacular. I'm just going to crack the tactical map here and uh, have a little look around, uh, see what's going on and where. These Storm Pioneers are going to be hosing down uh, these uh, riflemen here. And a squad of rear echelon troops actually getting up around uh, the back of these uh, Axis forces. Uh, that's going to enable them to, getting s to start getting some capturing done. And also, I mean, whilst Nagano has the lead in the victory point situation at the moment, holding as he does two to one, although one being captured by Jove, uh, it's Jove who, uh, as you can see by looking at the minimap, has more field domination and also a lot more resources, uh, possessing as he does uh, a fuel income of 35 and munitions of 57. That's over the 17 and 27 of the Axis player, so uh, uh, Nagano at the moment falling behind insofar as resources go. Stuart, like tank, is going to be the choice here for the American player. Three-quarter ton ambulance going to be following on. There is a Raketenwerfer on the field just now for the Axis player. And it's kind of nearly in position, actually, to start taking some pot shots at this light tank. But it's going to have to be careful. It's not very well supported just now. And it could get overrun. It's also the only unit right now for the Axis player capable of harming this light tank. So uh, if the light tank gets all up on top of it, there's going to be no nothing else that can be done. There's no Panzer Shreks. And, of course, the Overcommand Forces don't have Panzer Fausts or any other way of snaring a, a tank unit outside of using one of their commanders for example the breakthrough doctrine gets panzer fusiliers who have the anti-tank rifle grenade but uh, that's not even an option right now for nagano so <coughs> he's gonna have to be very cautious here uh loving this uh this is this is the old uh, frisian camel uh, camouflage here which is uh, always good times um nice to see it there being busted out by jove looks like the rocket are just gonna camo up and actually take a pretty nice position here i quite like that oh Oh, a shoe mine on the door of this building. Nagano getting a squad wipe on a unit of uh, riflemen. I did not see him deploy those mines. Shoe mines there proving utterly fatal for the American forces. And uh, that's some pretty devastating stuff. We've got a... Uh, sorry. <laughs> Just being distracted, like there's alerts popping up on my second monitor, my bad. Um, yeah, we've got a scuffle here in mid, a couple of Vox Grenadiers doing their thang. It's nothing to write home about, though. And Nagano actually taking some pretty nice fights here, and he's going to be able to grab a bit of ground. Um, I worry about his anti-tank. Like, where's all his munitions gone? I guess it's on those shoe mines and... Uh, I sp oh, here we go. So he does have one Panzer Shrek, and he does have the metal pa detector as well. Uh, so he does have one Panzer Shrek, nowhere near the, uh, the light tank. Actually, no, just closing in on it now. <coughs> So he's going to get one shot, but it's going to hit some uh, intervening obstructing terrain here. And uh, the Stuart's going to push back in, I imagine. Might look to get some damage onto that Volkswagen. Whoa, coming in a little deep here. Bang, going to take a Shrek to the face for its trouble. Um, and uh, is the uh, the Raketenwerfer is, is transferring across. So, <coughs> pardon me. Nagano marshalling his AT forces nicely here to keep this Stuart at bay. And I think it's safe to say that the Stuart so far hasn't actually been super effective or anything. It's not even got that much work done. Boom, another good hit from this Raketenwerfer, which must be coming up for one star of veterancy. Uh, whoa, getting the final hit there and destroying the light tank. And with that, I say Nagano pulls ahead just a little bit. Now, there is a, a, a mortar half-track on the field, which means that Jove has selected his commander. He's gone for the infantry company, so just press pause on the YouTube channel briefly. I mean, quickly now, if you want to overview those abilities there at your leisure. But uh, yeah, a nice, potent, all-round commander. And I have to say, one that I don't really see, like, almost ever these days. So that's nice, yeah, and it's going to give uh, Jove access to this... Um, this mortar half track, which uh, has already gotten a couple of nice, nice hits in, and uh, I believe that does it have the smoke barrage? Oh, it has one better. It has a white phosphorus barrage. Okay, it costs munitions, but it also burninates the hell out of your opponents. Uh, he's also going to have access to that M1919 LMG, the ever potent uh, M1919, which you can see these riflemen using here to devastating effect. That one of the better pieces of equipment any infantry squad can have. Incendiary grenade going to come down here, and that's going to force the captain back. Wow, quite a few models getting gunned down on the retreat there. Um, 
But I imagine these Volks Grenadiers are going to get brushed aside pretty quickly. The M1919, just, it just doesn't take prisoners. Look at it hacking through this, uh, hacking through these Volks. Now, uh, we've got uh, more M1919s actually just appearing across all these Rifleman squads. You can see uh, three of them have uh, got the M1919, and I guess these guys who are just now arriving, there's, there's enough munitions actually. Well, there will be in just a second for them to grab themselves one of the spicy LMGs. And uh, I kind of worry that Nagano's composition here is uh, just a little one-dimensional. Uh, he doesn't really have a lot of flexibility or useful abilities he can use, and he's going to lose in a heads-up fight pretty much every time against this lineup of riflemen with 1919s. Um, so he's going to need to add some punch to his forces, and sooner rather than later, I believe the Schwerer Panzer HQ is yep is starting to deploy in this location here. Uh, interesting positioning here. Most uh, most over command players I see tend to put it somewhere around here because that way it covers a victory point on this map, but. Uh, We'll see. Nagano may have plans for that, and oh dearie me, I have not uh, set myself to offline on the Steemenstein. Oh, oh, oh. This is part of the hazards of trying your settings out and things. You do forget about these things. There we go. Set myself to offline, so we will not be getting distracted by Steam updates and stuff like that. Sorry about that. Um... So yeah, Nagano's position, as you can tell, let me crack the tack actually, Nagano's position here becoming increasingly compacted, which has got to be a concern for the, uh, for the overcommand player. These riflemen are still basically ruling the roost insofar as any fight goes. I mean, like, any fight that these, uh, oh wow, yeah, sorry, any fight that these, uh, Volks Grenadiers try and take, they're just going to get handily beaten by these, uh, 1919 LMGs. Uh, actually, a two, two on one, they, there we go, forcing a fallback on a pre-damaged squad of riflemen, but... These riflemen are still hella effective, and I think it's going to have to be Obersoldaten for the counter. And I really like the choice of Obersoldaten. Nagano's actually locked in his commando as well. He's gone for the Special Operations Doctrine, so again, just hit pause on the YouTube channel. Oops, if you want to overview those abilities at your leisure. But, uh, of course, this uh, Special Operations uh, Doctrine does give uh, the infrared STGs to your Obersoldaten soldiers, making them uh, even more potent anti-infantry long-range specialists. Uh, a new Stuart is on the field as well, actually. So Jove's going to be uh, bringing a new Stuart out onto the field. And Nagano desperately struggling here to try and maintain field control in the face of superior infantry and a very mobile lineup of uh, Mortar Half Track and the, uh, and the uh, Stuart Light Tank. Stuart's going to discover the uh, Schwerer Panzer HQ here. Also a Rakettenwerfer in a great position. Going to get a shot into the front of that tank. And it's uh, super low health. Going to have to fall back. Whoa. Somehow these rear echelons are getting way too badly stuck in, actually. they nearly a squad wipe going down there, but uh, unfortunately not picking that up uh, for Nagano. And uh, here comes the captain. This mortar half-track just kind of... Let's see how much... Uh, so it's got two kills. Coming up for half a star of veterancy. Bam! Claims a third kill there with a nice direct hit onto that squad of Volks Grenadiers. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, yeah, very, very nice stuff here from Jove, who I, I think it's safe to say, despite being slightly behind in the score count, has looked pretty dominant this game so far. Um, actually, no, you know what, actually, having said that, no, because Nagano swatted down that first Stuart really nicely, and he's defended really well against the light tank, so I do take that back, actually. I, I, the two players so far seemingly quite evenly matched on, on, on balance. So, uh, anyway, yeah, we'll have to see what the choice is. Oh, yeah, it's going to be Obersoldart in here for, uh, for Nagano. So, they're going to be coming on out. The infrared STG package probably going to be upgraded soon. Infiltration grenade's going to be used on the building here. But uh, the captain manages to get out alive. And uh, the fallback's going to come down on him. These Volks Grenadiers need to fall back really soon. Because these uh, 1919 LMG-equipped riflemen are just chewing them up. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty devastating there. Uh, these riflemen here are going to be getting some capturing done out in the east. And it seems like we've uh, got the beginnings of what could be a really good game here. I mean, we're coming up to, you know, 14 minutes in. The scoreline's pretty even. Both uh, both players have conserved their... I mean, there's been no absolutely one-sided slaughters or anything like that. Both sides conserving their forces really well. The STG upgrade just now finishing on these uh, Obersol done. Uh, but yeah, both forces doing a really good job uh, keeping their units alive. Actually, oh, these... these oh, my goodness, these Volks Grenadiers getting super low. And they are getting focused a bit on the retreat. They are going to get out, but damn, that was close. These Obersold are just racking damage up. I believe the uh, infrared STGs kind of ignore cover. Is that what they do? Da -da -da -da. Uh, more effective against units in cover. So uh, I don't know if it actually ignores cover or if it ignores like a certain amount of a cover bonus or what. But uh, that's something I should look up, actually. Uh, but anyway, we've got an M1 AT gun on the field here for Joe. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, a little bit of insurance there against... Uh, um, against uh, oncoming armoured vehicles from Nagano. Nagano has a uh, second squad of Obersoldaten coming onto the field now, and I expect to see the STG-44s upgraded onto them as well. There we go, the upgrade coming down there. 90 munitions, I believe, the cost. 60 munitions! Oh yeah, they, they, they changed it! That was quite a while ago, actually, they patched that. Yeah, so it's the same as the 
LMG34. Actually, um, it's no wonder that this uh, commander is starting to see slightly more, uh, slightly more play these days. But uh, this building on critically low health, Nagano is going to acknowledge that and respecting it, he's going to move these uh, Volks Grenadiers out of the building. Rear Echelon's getting displaced again here. And uh, the Stuart looks like it's lock loaded and ready to roll again. The vehicle crew repairs have completed on that. Kind of getting stopped by some barbed wire here. Is this the reinforced barbed wire? Yeah, that's the reinforced barbed wire. Uh, apparently, can a Stuart crush through that? Apparently not. It's a touch awkward there. Uh, I worry about the uh, anti-tank though for uh, Nagano. He's done well so far off of this Rakettenwerfer and uh, a single Shrek Volk, which is uh, over here, or Volk Shrek. Uh, but I think he's going to need more because uh, I think any time now we could have uh, we could have uh, additional armored units entering the field for the American player. Let me just quickly check the tech. I'm not actually sure what he's up to over here. Okay, so there's no major forthcoming, uh, which yeah, that, that explains why he's stacking so much fuel. Uh, we'll have to see if he's going to go for the major. You have to think probably, um, because the uh, the infantry uh, company commander doesn't actually offer you like any armored call-ins as such. I mean, you've got the priest, but that's hardly like a battle tank. So probably going to see a major and use of Shermans on this map. I would have thought, but I mean, he doesn't have to do that until he sees an armored choice out of Nagano. And one thing I've noticed from these top-level players, like the really good players, is they just don't spend their resources till they absolutely need to. So I, possibly Jove is going to wait till he sees what Nagano goes for. And then, uh, and then choose something appropriate. Because if Nagano doesn't go for a panther or, or you know, uh, or anything you know heavy like that, um, then you know a, a Sherman may not may well not be needed. You know, or a Jackson may not be needed. And these this fuel could go somewhere else. For example, into the priest, which could now be called in. So we'll have to see what Joe's going to do right now. Uh, if I crack the tactical map, uh, Nagano's just falling back to reinforce and rearm some of his squads. There is just a moment of quiet here. You can see the force, uh, the force deployment here for both players. Jove uh, spreading out and getting some capping done. Nagano doing a good job so far, marshalling these two victory points and, and in fact main uh, maintaining control over a large area of the map. But uh, uh, Jove now has a window here where he can get some work done. The Stuart's going to press in. Where's the Rakettenwerfer? The Rakettenwerfer is in position. Nicely done here. Nagano's use of this Rakettenwerfer, it's always been in the right place at the right time, every time to push these Stuarts away. And, uh, you know, the first Stuart died very quickly. The second Stuart has stayed alive longer, but it's only gotten four kills. So it's safe to say that Nagano managing these Stuarts really well, keeping their efficiency very low. And uh, that's uh, that's in spite of the fact that he only has a Rakettenwerfer and a Panzerschreck, which I would say kind of almost worryingly little, but, you know, he's making it work. Uh, so this is really interesting to watch. Uh, yeah, it's always good to see, like, really high-level players in action. And, like, I myself am, like, just kind of, I don't know, absorbing, like, digesting and trying to learn a bit more um now that i've got my twitch channel set up a bit more i'm hoping to be able to stream you know some just some games of me playing practicing on the ladder that kind of thing uh <laughs> so i'm uh taking notes let's just say i'm taking notes totes taking notes that was awful <laughs> um Anyways, uh, let's see now. Whoa, building coming down here. That was in this location here. Volks Grenadiers unaffected, of course. I don't think they were even inside it, actually. And uh, this mortar half track now seven kills, one and a half stars of veterancy. So that's beginning to look fairly efficient here. And it's going to get. Ooh. Oh, it's using the white phosphorus barrage. Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, a scuffle here on the right flank as these storm pioneers are going to be risking their lives to defuse mines here whilst under fire. Fair enough. Of course, you don't want to be hit by mines. It looks like the uh, Oversold Art and two squads thereof with the uh, infrared STGs. Let's just keep an eye on the health of these riflemen here. You can see it in the bottom right here. Oops, he says. You can see the health in the bottom right. And uh, whoa, that mortar half track just coming to their aid just in time. I would have thought that those Oversold Art would have easily overcome them given uh, given enough time. But that mortar half track going to deny them that time. 179 fuel here for Rook, uh, for, uh, sorry, for Nagano. Uh, I don't know, actually. It's a little strange. It's a little strange because he's got the Panzer HQ. He's floating 180-odd fuel. Uh, he can call in the Panzer command tank for 225, so I guess he's saving for that, but that means all he's gotten out of the Schwerer Panzer HQ are the Obersoldaten, which is which is probably enough to justify it, to be honest, but it's... Uh, it, it just feels a little unfocused to me because usually when players are going to go for a panther and they choose this commander, they just go for the panther command tank because it's pretty good. It's only 25 fuel more and of course you don't need the Shreya Panzer HQ to go for it. Um, uh, but Nagano, clearly a more experienced player than I with this uh, with this commander and he's uh, gone for uh, he's gone for the Shreya Panzer HQ to get Obersold out and put the infrared STGs on them as a, as a counter to this infantry heavy play that we see uh, from Jove. So yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. Reasonably 
big fight being taken here. Both players still being very cautious, falling back their squads in good order, displaying excellent control over their units. The Stuart's going to come in here for a poke, and where's the Rakettenwerfer in all this? Ah, it seems like maybe the Stuart will have a window to actually get some work done here. The Rakettenwerfer out of position on the right of the screen just now. Uh, the Shrek Volk is here, and it appears to have gotten a hit in, but it's not going to be enough, and the Stuart's still chipping in damage from range. The 1919 uh, Rifleman and the Captain doing really good damage. The Rakettenwerfer actually has engaged cameras, just sneaking in here. Let's see if he's able to get a hit onto the Stuart. Bang, he is, and the Stuart kind of in jeopardy now. The Rakettenwerfer reloads pretty fast, and the arc extends quite far, and Nagano going to pick up his second light tank of the game. Excellent work. That Rakettenwerfer always, always seemingly is able to, be able to be enough and do the job, and it rises to two stars. Well, I, I, actually, I think it was two stars already, but it's nearly three-star veteran now. So Nagano getting a lot of value out of the OKW anti-tank piece there. It's nice to see, because... Um, it often feels quite underwhelming compared to a, a proper anti-tank gun. You know, like a six-pounder or a pack gun. But anyway, Obersol Darton are uh, healed and ready to rock. Looks like these riflemen getting a touch bar forward. They're being sprayed down by the Shafara Panzer HQ and these two squads of Obersol Darton. Never what you want. That is always going to ruin your Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, they are going to have to fall back. They are going to have to fall back there. And uh, seemingly, we do have the Major on the field here for the American player, Joe. So he's going to have that functionality for uh, blocking caps and also the forward fallback. Whoa, that is assuming he doesn't take a bad fight against these Obersold and You want to take care of your officers. And there's a Jackson coming out onto the field. So a preemptive Jackson here. Going to be uh, preempting any armored choice here from Nagano. Now, Nagano nearly has the fuel for a Panther, but uh, actually uh, he um, lost his fuel point for a while and his map control has been quite constricted. So his fuel income for a while there was pretty low he's recovering it now um but uh, yeah he's gonna have his uh, he's gonna have his choice here of armored unit coming up shortly is nagano and uh whatever it is it's gonna have to be wary of a jackson on the field a little bit of a left hook of rifleman and a captain gonna be swinging onto this victory point four star volks are in position but it's not gonna be enough despite the heavy cover captain's gonna get up on top of them grenade barrage that's the infiltration grenade package coming down but the captain with his tommy gun is pretty powerful so you have to respect that uh actually wait does the captain squad have a tommy gun yeah he does yeah 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 uh, so, um, uh, so yeah, those Volks Grenadiers are going to survive, though. Now, where's the Major in all this? Okay, the Major's been forced back. Looks like the Obersold Darton were able to find him. Mortar half-track for uh, the American player, able to get up to two stars. And here comes the Panther Command Tank for Nagano. Uh, this is this is the money right now. This is uh, whatever happens to this Panther Command Tank is pretty much going to decide how the rest of the mid-game is going to look. Because... Uh, yeah, it all comes down to this. Bang! The Jackson getting a fantastic shot, revealing itself out of the fog of war. This Panther command tank actually stopped with the uh, Jackson in its uh, in its arc here. The M1 anti-tank gun is also chipping in some rounds. The engine gets broken. The veteran riflemen are going to use their uh, anti-tank rifle grenade. And this Panther is now stricken. Urgh, it takes another stinging blow from the Jackson. It's returning fire as best it can, but it's not going to be enough. Even the mortar getting stuck in a bit, desperately trying to use the ruin of this building as a line of sight blocker. Wow, look at the uh, glitchiness on these graphics here. Anyway... This Panther Command Tank desperately falling ta falling back. The Jacksons can stalk if it wants to, though. The Rakettenwerfer are going to feed itself in as a sacrificial distraction, seemingly. Probably a bit of a misclick there from Nagano, who finds himself reasonably flustered here. Jackson coming in, takes another shot, but it's not going to do any damage. Uh, is he going to get this Panther Command Tank out of here? Let's rotate the camera so we can see a bit. I think he's just going to save it. That is such a close run thing, though. Nagano getting caught off guard there committing the panther tank into mid and uh just kind of getting exposed to a whole load of at and an anti-tank rifle grenade pretty much a worst case scenario he's able to salvage uh, his dignity along with the tank thank goodness if, if that tank had gotten blown up he would have been looking pretty foolish there and it was only like one more jackson hit possibly away from being destroyed like i think that might be a jackson hits worth of health there um jacksons do like really good damage so uh anyway Nagano lucky there, and he's going to have another bite at the apple with his uh, with his uh, Panther Command Tank, which is fortunate indeed. That tank, of course, a force multiplier. It does buff your other vehicles in the hood. So uh, Nagano should look to get out some more armored vehicles, and that would make the, the Panther Command Tank much more mm, much more valuable. That would make it much more efficient is the word I'm looking for. So, uh, yeah, the Panther Command Tank going to be repaired. Of course, the Overcommand Engineers, Storm Pioneers, they repair really, really, really quickly. They've got the repair tool, uh, so they're going to repair even faster. Here comes a regular Sherman rolling onto the battlefield just now. So uh, that is going to be a really nice, uh, a really useful uh, piece. And I kind of feel like this is a great package here. 
for Jove. If you look at the top left, he's got a really well-rounded army. It's well-equipped. It's got good veterancy on the core infantry, uh, and uh, it's able to handle a variety of circumstances. And he's got a lot of AT in the form of uh, the Captain, the M1 AT gun, the Jackson, and now this Sherman coming on, which is going to add yet more anti-tank might. Here comes the uh, here comes the um, the command panther. Now that is set to uh, target vehicles. There we go. He uh, detoggles the uh, target vehicles, and that's going to allow him to hose down this major here. Uh, Volksgrenadiers taking a whole ton of fire here. Nagano needs to be paying attention to these Volksgrenadiers. They're getting sprayed down, and he does. The 1919s again, just cutting his infantry to shreds. And uh, Nagano, uh, he comes under pressure on the uh, on the eastern flank here as well. This Sherman set to HE rounds. Boom! Taking the pot shots onto his Volksgrenadiers who are just falling back there. The Command Panther comes across to try and assist. And there are Storm Pioneers to ward off these rear echelon troops. Nagano needs to be careful of mines. He knew that there were mines out here before. I guess he just had his mine sweeper out here. So he feels happy going this far. But he's got to be really careful. He's taking a dive here straight onto this uh, onto this um, Sherman. Using the target vehicle ability. That's the coordinated fire ability. Uh, improves accuracy against a given target, but uh, the rifleman here able to use the uh, engine breaking um, anti-tank rifle grenade there, and now the Jackson is in the hood on cleanup duty. The Sherman has loaded uh, armor-piercing rounds and is blocking the retreat on the engine damage command panther, and unfortunately, that will be all she wrote for the German cat there. The big cat is going to go down. Let's just uh, let's just witness the last moments of this panther command tank. Such a sad moment, and of course the main gun is broken. Boom! There it goes. At least it wasn't abandoned, I guess. That would uh, that would be the worst possible thing. Raquette and Worf are going to get into a decent position. Gets a nice hit on the Jackson, of course. That's that's something, at least, for Nagano. Gets itself another Star of Veterans. He needs to pull it back. There we go. Mortar's coming in, and the 1919 LMG is also cutting it down. Uh, you know what? The one thing I haven't mentioned in a while, actually, is the scoreline. So I'll bring your attention to that right now. 370 for the Axis player, 277 for the American player. So Nagano has actually built himself up a little bit of a buffer in terms of the scoreline. So he does have some time to work with here, as I have a sip on my drink. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's going to be pushing up here. Nice wave of infantry. Of course, these Volks, he's now got two Shreks on the Volks, and I like this. He needs more Shreks on the Volks. Uh, and, uh, you know, two, two four-star, one five-star on the Volks. So pretty intimidating core infantry here. Nice stuff. They're at that level now where they're more survivable under fire from the uh, 1919s. They are uh, able to actually hold their own a little bit there. So that, that's really nice. They're also, ooh, he might find the mortar half-track here. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, there he goes. And if he's clever, oh, he's going to take a shot too early. Okay, fair enough. Jove did see that and fell, fell back. Jove, just too high a caliber of player. I was going to say, if he's clever, he could get both of his Shreks in range and take two shots, getting double the damage in before Jove notices. But actually, you know, Jove's just such a good player. He's going to spot that straight away. Whoa, what the hell? Something here just exploding. I think this piece of terrain there catching around from the Shrek and just going up. And, uh... Oh, whoa, these Volks Grenadiers now brutally overexposed. There's too many 1919s in the hood. And where are the Obersold art? And they need to be up here supporting. Infiltration Grenade Package going to come down. But uh, a nice dodge out of the building from Jove. Going to really prevent that from doing very much good at all. And uh, Nagano right now. What the? Sorry, behind all this, Nagano's actually triple cap Jove. This I didn't see. So Nagano actually taking care of business behind this. I was going to say, these engagements looking a bit shaky. He needs to reinforce the Obersold art and get them back out there. There we go. Um... But uh, yeah, but taking care of business, taking care of the things that matter, and that is the victory points, extending his lead. So do keep an eye on the scoreline as this game goes on. Joe putting up a fantastic fight, but he's got to start looking after these victory points. I mean, we're moving into the late game now, and that's, of course, when the victory points make the most difference and count for the most, because the players lower on tickets uh, stand, you know, stand. it's easier to push them out of the game, basically. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's no secret. Everybody knows the later the game goes on, the more important the victory points are. Um, a 50 cal uh, machine gun going to be coming onto the queue here for Jove, which is nice. He actually did a back tech to Lieutenant, which is something I didn't mention earlier. And the Lieutenant here going to be using his lesser well-seen... Uh, 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 no, he's just going to be standing in the base. Hmm. Is it the Lieutenant who can use Overseer, or is that the Captain? Oh, no, it's the uh, Supervisors on the Captain. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> my poor knowledge of the USF forces. I'm, I'm, I'm resolved to try and play them like... February is going to be like my USF month or something um, because I haven't played them in like so long, not properly anyway. So my knowledge of the USF faction really needs some work. As you can see, I thought lieutenants might have the supervisability, but it's actually captains who do. Uh, anyway, Raquette and Wurfer here going to go up to four stars of veterancy. This one has been just the bane of the armor for Jove. Always in the right place at the right time, seemingly. Two squads of Oversold aren't going to get up here and start trying to do some work, but three-star riflemen are hard as nails, and they've got 1919s and a pretty good crossfire being set up here. These Oversold aren't are not trading efficiently, and they need to think about retreating. They haven't even killed a single rifleman yet. And four Oversold aren't. 
Pardon me, four Ubersaw Darton have died. Whoa, Yagpans are going to be the choice. I did not see that until it just rolled onto the screen. Yagpans are going to be the choice here for Nagano, and I do like this. He's not got it set to prioritize vehicles, has he? Oh, he does. Uh, so yeah, Yagpans are going to be the choice here. 50 cal LMG, though, getting set up in a really nice position. That's going to force Nagano back, and if you look at the minimap, in fact, there's a moment here where I can just crack the tack and show you what I mean. Uh, yeah, Jove pushing here for really good effect. Jove capturing all the victory points. He's about to have double fuel. Um, so, yeah, looking really good right now, the situation for Jove. He's been able to take some convincing fights off the back of that Panther command tank being taken out. And uh, he now stands he now stands pretty tall in this game. Uh, so Nagano does have a ticket lead. He's at 312 right now over, th over 223. So a reasonable ticket lead for the Axis player. And that's going to give him some time to work with. He does have a moment here to just catch his breath, reinforce his units, rally his army, get everything into a good position, uh, get out this uh, Jagdpanzer here. And now, uh, now he can try... Now he can try for a for a beefy engagement, but I mean, look, it's 93 supply over 74. Look at the top left, look at the top right. The Axis forces are definitely potent, but um, I, this is becoming a bit of a catchphrase for me, I guess, but I know which army I prefer. <laughs> and right now it's the blue pieces. I prefer Jove's army a little bit here. So uh, Nagano is not going to have as much time as he wants to get up to, you know, max supply and, and you know, get, a, get, get like the most ideal army going. He's going to have to try and make something happen with the forces he has. And that, it's pretty good force. It's no doubt. Look at the amount of stars of veterans here for this force. It's pretty good. These Oversold Art and the 3-star. And they're getting on for 4-star. And when Oversold Art and hit 4-star, that's like a transformational veterancy rank. Because then they can start suppressing things. And they, that allow, enables them to take on, like, quite a few squads if you get the right engagement. And, it, you know, they start looking really good then. Volk's Grenadiers here going to be pushing really hard up into this uh, 50 cal and actually forcing the fullback. Nice flank here from this other squad of Volk's Grenadiers. M1 AT gun also getting kind of caught short in the open here. These Volk's Grenadiers, though, getting shredded by a nice concave of American units. There's the fullback, but they're super low. Jove is not going to prioritize targeting them, though. No focus fire came down. Looks like the Storm Pioneer is going to be receiving the brunt of the American forces fire here. And they need to get out as well. There, There's only two Storm Pioneers here. They're super weak. Where's the fullback? Nagano needs to pay them some attention, and he does. This is what I love about high level play. There's no foolish mistakes being made, giving the whole game away and look there's an m980 uh, an anti-tank weapon on the floor here that could be a really nice swipe and he's also managed to pick up this m1 at gun here as nagano so fantastic stuff for the axis player here the Yagpans are in a really good position also to deflect this sherman biff getting a nice hit into the front armor but here comes the jackson baff and that's the counter hit biff there we go my god it's just like a a slugging match here between these uh, these AT units, but uh, a Volk unit here with a Shrek can actually be enough to tip the balance and push back the American armor. These Yagpans are now in a dangerous position, and I don't know why it's rotating on the spot. Nagano needs to make sure it's always facing this way. If he wants to get it out of there, he should reverse move, and there he does. So, uh, excellent stuff here. Oh, losing a Volk's Grenadier squad. That was a really vetted up Volk's Grenadier squad, and they are going to drop that bazooka back again. So the uh, Obersold Darton are here taking the fight, but they're very clustered up. The Armort is still coming in. That Mortar Half Track was never eliminated. So uh, they're going to have to try and be very careful about how they take this fight. There we go. Oh, there comes the fullback, but it's going to be just a bit too late. Opportunity for a squad wipe here for Jove. Okay, yeah, the Obersold Darton are going to get out of there. Damn, that was close, though. Man, Nagano is probably really feeling it right now. He's probably a bit hot under the collar and sweating it. His victory point lead has been all but eroded away. And the American forces have a really nice position on the doorstep of his base. He's doing what he can. He's desperately trying to stay in this game. Infiltration grenade's going to be used to uh, get the American forces out of this garrison. But that Lieutenant BAR and a Tommy gun is a brutal combo. Going to be doing a lot of damage. 50 cal set up in a great position to cover this westernmost victory point. And I love it. Just mixing in these uh, these machine guns for uh, for Jove is making life so hard for his opponent to move around the map. There's no indirect fire at all for Nagano right now. He doesn't have a mechanized regiment HQ either, so he cannot construct the walking Stuka, the Werferman half-track. So that's not an option. The, uh, the Jagdpanzer is now repaired and ready to rock, actually, so that's going to help him moving forwards. But uh, 208 tickets under 223, and being triple cap right now is Nagano in this clash of the titans. I mean, Joe versus Nagano, what a match to walk into the live game lobbies to, by the way. This is why I love going to the live game lobby. Like, you never know if the top match is going to be between two noobs, between two good players you've never heard of, or between two of the top players in the game right now, uh, as is the case today. So, um, yeah, really, I just, I don't know. I like it. It's exciting. Um, anyway... Let's crack the tack here because uh, Nagano's been forced back again. Jove here flexing his muscles a little bit and dominating the map as I take a sip on my drink. And uh, we can begin to see here 
We can begin to see these uh, Axis forces moving on out for another wave. Now, the M1 anti-tank gun is going to provide a lot of help, but I feel like uh, Nagano needs to try and get some indirect fire. There's no facility on this commander to call in a barrage either, which means that these MGs look at the amount of suppression hitting his forces. Obersold are normally so potent against infantry, being countered handily right now by the American 50 caliber machine guns. Up, 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 Brutal stuff and a nice grenade coming down here off these riflemen forcing back the Obersold Art, and the, the entire fight is pretty much on this screen right now. If you look at the minimap, very little action going on elsewhere, which is making my job as a caster really easy. Oh, these over these um, Volks Grenadiers, oh, super low here. The Lieutenant focusing them hard to, hardcore there, and uh, 250 cals as well, just chewing through this infantry. And I just think that actually, like, Nagano just has no answer for these 50 cals, and there's a third one coming out onto the field right now for the American player. So between the uh, between the 1919 LMGs and the 50 cals and his officers, I just think the infantry war going absolutely Job's way. The Jagdpanzer is a nice choice. It's up to one-star veterancy, so it does have predator camo. You can see it just going invisible right here. But I just, I, I, it's just not enough. It's just not enough for Nagano, who's down now at 127 under 223. It was a fantastic early and mid game. But at the higher level of play, it becomes increasingly difficult to get out from under a deficit front like this because a player like Jove is just going to play so well and knows exactly how to leverage his advantage. And, uh, yeah, difficult times. Looks like the Yagpans are going to bravely just, like, advance forward and uh, get some hits on that uh, on that Jackson, but it's going to be forced back, actually, in the end. And uh, was that a Panzer Shrek? Yeah, there's a dropped Panzer Shrek on the floor here. That, that would be quite a nice pickup for anyone who was to, um, you know, pick it up. Uh, so yeah, probably, possibly one of these squads will grab it. Maybe even the rear echelons. I don't suppose they've got any upgrades. Well, I don't know. It's a bit of an assumption, but anyway. Uh, yeah, look at this 50 cal in this building. Like that's preventing him from getting that victory point. 50 cals all over this victory point. That leaves only mid to be pushed at. So the Volks Grenadiers are going to come through here. Going to have a go. Grenade barrage comes down. Also another grenade coming down off the American forces here. No riflemen going down at all. Three Volks Grenadiers dying in the opening stages of that battle. That's going to force back that squad. And here comes the response as the Sherman, the Lieutenant, a 50 cal repositioning into a nice position. But uh, actually Nagano is going to get the decap on this victory point, And that's what he needs to do. You know, that's the work he needs to get done. This is a start. This is something. Yagpans are going to push through here, but it's very wounded. He needs to be quite careful. Engaging the Predator Camo, who's going to stalk forward and look for a hit on the Sherman, which he's going to find nicely done. But he needs to be very careful with this Jagdpanzer. Remember, there's a Jackson out here, and here it is. And if that Jackson was feeling really feisty, he could send it round here and actually get a flank shot on the uh, Jagdpanzer. But that's quite risky. He doesn't know what's out here. Actually, there's an M1 AT gun. Oh, wow, he's going to try it. So here we go. This is Fog of War uh, working for you. Oh, the Jagdpanzer takes a hit. It's not actually dead. It's just on a pixel of health on its very last legs. And uh, Nagano here fighting tooth and nail, but uh, he is uh, he is under the water right now, and Jove is holding him down there. This is some pretty gross stuff right now. And look at the force here for Nagano. There was a moment when he was at like 70, 80 against 90, 100, and now it's 60 versus 70. And uh, it's it's a little bit like in chess. It's, it's an RTS philosophy in general. Um, when you're ahead, trading is always adv advantageous to you. If you've got 10 units and your opponent has five and you trade one for one, then eventually you'll have five and they'll have zero and you'll completely win. So when you're ahead, trading evenly is almost always an advantage. And uh, Jove here, no stranger to this philosophy and demonstrating it really nicely. Damn, I mean, the field control from these 50 cows. This army composition from Jove, just untouchable for Nagano. And there's just no option for Nagano to call in any indirect fight it's like jove has found the perfect counter here he's like you don't have mechanized command you've already locked in your commander you can't call in anything except um lag field guns and you know those would be a a bit soggy and b two manpower intensive for this phase in the game so um <clears throat> The unit composition here out of Joe, very nice. Just bringing in 50 cals later on and making them look really good. And this is almost a unit which I think for the American forces is like criminally underutilized. And Jove here making it look really good. Nagano here. There's no more hope for him in this game. He's on six tickets. He's under a triple cap. He gave it his best shot. But Jove is an absolute monster and demonstrating why that's the case here in this game with the American forces. And that is going to be the end of that game. Yeah, what a, what a game. I'm really happy I was able to find that one on the live games lobby there. Nagano giving it his all. And I haven't seen him play over command forces before. So interesting to get an insight into how uh, Nagano, um, you know, deploys the, the over command forces. Also a quite, quite a strange, well, not strange, just a lesser seen map as well. So quite a bizarre battle in some ways, but yeah, uh, fantastic work from Jove. Um, and a really, really nice to see him in action there. 
Uh, I'll upload this video to the YouTube channel. I'm really hoping that the settings were good. As I say, please give me some feedback if you think the video or the sound or anything like that was off or too loud or too quiet or, you know, just... Whatever your observations are, that will be valuable to me right now because what I'm doing is uh, changing my setup around quite a lot because this Sunday I will be hosting the EU ESL Go4 Company of Heroes Cup number 6 on my Twitch channel, which is at Twitch slash Magpie842. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of changes to my setup and I'm kind of, uh, you know, ironing out a lot of kinks. And a big shout out to Fahu, who's, um, you know, a prolific player in the community and usually plays in these ESL Cups. He's uh, taken some time out to help me get set up, which has been really, really useful and I've really appreciated his help. So big shout out to Fahu on that one. And, uh, yeah, I believe that's it. I'll be bringing you more casts, of course, over the coming days. I'll also be streaming some games, so do keep an eye on my Twitch channel. And, uh, yeah, for now, this is...